You could not live with your own failure. And where did that bring you? Back to me. Hey, what is going on guys? It is your boy Dude in Alaska here with a review of Avengers Endgame. So if you have not seen the movie yet, go ahead and click away because there will be spoilers ahead. Alright guys, so I finally had the opportunity to see Avengers Endgame on Friday night and I just gotta tell you, it is amazing. It is the epic conclusion to the 11 years through the Marvel Cinematic Universe and the Infinity Saga. So just jumping right into it, I really appreciate, now that I've had time to digest all the information, I really appreciate the time that they took on the character arcs in this movie. The, uh, the time that we got to really just reconnect with these characters that we've uh, grown to love over the last 11 years. We've gotten to see where they are at this point in time in their lives and um, just kind of see the struggles that they're going through. And I just, uh, first, you know, when I was sitting in my seat there in the theater, I was really um, kind of let down by the movie. I didn't feel like it should have been, you know, like two hours of like dialogue and one hour of action. But, you know, I really appreciate, after I've had the time to digest everything, I really appreciate the time that they took to reconnect us with the characters. Uh, another thing that I really liked was the continuation of the feud with Cap and Tony. Uh, they didn't just brush everything over and make them um, reconnect really quickly. It took, you know, that five years before they even talked about it. You know, there was that issue right at the start where they had the yelling match and um, Tony was asking Cap, you know, why were you there? You said you were going to be there. And it was it was just amazing. I love that emotional outburst. It was just um, an amazing addition right after Civil War. It's it's the um, the meetup that we wanted. There, you know, there was no immediate resolution. I just really appreciated that. And then the next thing that I liked was Tony's struggle with if he should uh, use the time travel solution or if they should destroy it. And just, you know, whether he should, you know, take the risk of giving up his family or, you know, actually save the world or have the potential to save the world. And just like, you know, that continuation of that battle that's been going on inside his mind. I just, I absolutely love that. One of the things or many of the things that annoyed me about this film, um, I'll just talk about real quick, was the rat right at the beginning that walks across you know that control panel uh, for like the quantum realm that portal and it lets Ant-Man out of the quantum realm that really kind of irked me because it was just like this one in a million chance you know this rat it was like the catalyst that brings him out of the quantum realm that allows them you know the ability to then go defeat Thanos and that just uh, it just it doesn't sit right with me it just seems like lazy writing and moving on from there you know later when they have the battle uh, with Thanos on the giant battlefield and you know they need the um, the van they need the portal uh, to send the time stones back to where they came from to their exact point in time and you know you see the van after this whole battle you see the van just sitting there untouched in the middle of the battlefield and that really irked me as well I'm like that's just super lazy writing as well um, I see the next thing was when uh, Black Widow and Hawkeye were trying to get the Soul Stone and they have this, you know, battle going on on who is going to let themselves die, who's going to let themselves be sacrificed for the Soul Stone. And it just, they draw it out so much. I think there's like four different times where they like stop each other from like killing themselves while they're trying to jump off the cliff. And it just got ridiculous. Like, I literally said out loud, I'm like, all right, this is getting ridiculous. Like, seriously, someone just needs to, like, just jump off and die. And, and, I mean, I, I was feeling in that moment, I was like, man, I don't want either of these people to die. But at the same time, I'm just like, the way they did it kind of ruined what happened afterwards where Black Widow, you know, um, was let go by Hawkeye and she falls to her death. And you see her, you know, bleeding out on the rocks below. What they did with that drawn out bit before kind of ruined that moment for me. And really, honestly, it ruined a good portion of the movie afterwards. Because that's all I could think about was how they drew that out. And it just kind of ruined it for me. So I don't know if any of you other guys felt that same way. But I know um, a couple of people that I talked to kind of felt the same way. So it just, 
I wish they would have done something else there that would that wouldn't have detached me from that moment, and I really could have enjoyed it. The other thing um, that irked me was Banner, um, Professor Hulk. I really, I can't get into that character. Maybe um, you know, in Phase Four, they'll do something um, else with him that'll like make me like Professor Hulk. But in this setting, you know, really, I feel like Hulk himself would have been a better fit, you know, because Tony was the one that developed the time travel. Professor Hulk really didn't do anything else. Um, you know, maybe Hulk himself would not have been able to do the snap. You know, maybe they needed Professor Hulk to have that, like, presence of mind to be able to do the snap to bring back all those people. But, you know, I just, Professor Hulk wasn't doing it for me. Um, the other thing was Fat Thor. Like, that just seems like lazy writing. I know they wanted the comic relief, and they were probably, like, needing something. I don't know. I don't know what their goal was here, but it was just... Again, it just seems like lazy writing. I don't know. I didn't really appreciate Fat Thor. I feel like the movie would have been just a bit more epic if, you know, Thor was, you know, fit, and he was in fighting condition, and it just... It would have added just a little bit more to that film. Um, where they kill Thanos right at the beginning of the film. Uh, I wish they would have drawn that out a little bit more. Maybe they could have taken away a little bit more dialogue out of like the two hours. But I feel like they should have drawn that out just a little bit more. So we could have um, gotten to know um, how Thanos was in that um, in that place. Like the, Just kind of get a feel of like the layout. You know, like the farming. Um, I just would have liked to explore that a little bit more rather than just show up, um, tackle him, kill him, and then move on. Um, one of the other things, you know, this might be an unpopular opinion, but I didn't know how to feel about Captain America wielding the hammer. I mean, I know that's like supposed to be the epic point of the film where he wields the hammer. But, you know, I really don't know how I feel about that. I mean, honestly, even as I'm saying this, you know, it's, I'm sure I'll grow to like it, but kind of at this moment, I'm just like, I don't know. It just kind of feels like they were just looking for something. I don't know. I'm sure I'll grow to like it. I just, I don't really appreciate it right now. I wish it could have been like, I don't know, just Thor going crazy. I wish I would have seen more of just Thor uh, with both the, the Stormbreaker and Mjolnir just going at it like crazy. We'll see what happens. I don't know. I'm, I'm sure I'll grow to like it, just like I've grown uh, to like the film as I've kind of disseminated the information and gotten used to it. And I apologize for my dog barking in the background. I don't know what he's, what his issue is right now. Um, so let me go ahead and jump into what I loved. Tony sacrificing himself with the snap. The one way that they could defeat Thanos. For me, this was like the ultimate character arc. And this was my, my prediction before the film even came out. That Tony would be the one who would ultimately sacrifice himself for the greater good. Because he started out as the, like the most selfish person in the entire universe. Like Tony Stark didn't care about any but anyone but himself. And then over like the last eleven years, you just see this um, amazing character arc where he becomes like this completely selfless, loving person that puts everyone before himself. Like he just wants to make sure that everyone is protected and safe, and he wants to take care of his teammates. And so it would, it would be the perfect end, and it was the perfect end to see him sacrifice himself for the good of everybody else. So those are just the quick points, my review of Avengers Endgame. If you guys have any other comments um, about what you liked or didn't like about Endgame, whether you agree or disagree, tell me what you think in the comments below. And also don't forget to like and subscribe. And thank you guys so much for watching, and we'll see you in the next one.